It's a little rust. Yeah, we, we all. Yo, welcome back to Coolin' Out. Kev. Yeah, Rev, we're back. We are back. It's been a while, but we're back. Back. Uh, so we're here this week. Actually, we make, we're gonna make up for it, though. Mm-hmm. Got a legendary guest with us. The legendary Alex Morgan. How's it going? Magician and mentalist. These are facts. <laughs> These are facts. Welcome, man. What's up? How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of let, course. Let, me, let me set you up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Move you. Oh, do you want me to move Yeah, this? I wasn't exactly. No, just put this right there. You really yeah. want to have Yeah, then yeah, you yeah. just want to get up on that thing. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Don't be afraid of Mike now. All right, totally. There you go. Right All there. Right. But, um, yeah, so what's up, man? Tell me about yourself. Uh, well, not much. My name's Alex. I'm a magician and mentalist from the beautiful state of New Jersey. Never so much applause on that front, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm a college student by day, and by night, I, uh, I go out and I perform. Uh, I'm in community college still. I'm studying business administration, and I got this idea ever since I was in like middle school, and I really got interested in performing, where I'm like, I don't want a desk job, I want to perform, but I want to do it financially the right way, so I decided I'm going to study marketing or something in the business or financial realm just so I can save money on getting an agent and everything and marketing and yeah 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 and uh, just a quick backstory of how you got here Alex and I connected when I found myself at an upscale party and party at uh Sparta New Jersey last month mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you were hosting a gig uh, I was performing there yeah performing. it was a two-day event it was the first ever two-day event I was at it was like performing at a music festival except <laughs> <laughs> only a tiny bit less exciting just just a tiny bit so, yeah. yeah. So, how long have you been practicing magic for? Uh, on a professional scale, almost eight years now. But in all, overall, uh, let's see, some math. Seventeen years. <coughs> years. I got my first magic set when I was four, and I was hit with what uh, a lot of magicians call the magic bug, mm-hmm. and uh, fell in love with it. And then I got into seventh grade, and like, you know, I'm. Um, starting to see that people are starting to love this and everything and I decided from that point I want to transition from it being a hobby into a career. Yeah, very soft spoken now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, but like really? Like for the recording you gotta just talk up just Oh, okay, more. okay. Yeah. All right. Because I can hear you. Right, they can. But these levels ain't here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is this better? That looks better. Yeah. yeah, that looks better right there. So, um, yeah, the first position said at four, mm-hmm. you just been hooked ever since. Like, oh, yeah. you just knew, like, what about magic excites you? Just, it's, it's the reactions that I get from people. Like, I, I love whenever I'm performing something and just at the end, I'm like, is this your card? Or, you know, I'm saying like, your mother's maiden name is, is Jacobson or, or any of these things. And people, they're just like, holy crap, that was amazing. And they just get this big smile on their face and that's, it's really the smile that is what I love about magic. Mm-hmm. So just that power that I can make people smile and laugh. So that's cool. What's your first act of note that you remember getting that kind of reaction? Oh man, uh, you know, like I said, I was doing magic for quite some time, mm-hmm. but back when I was in seventh grade, um, there was this girl uh, that I liked gonna say her name just in case she's listening she's like I knew it you know <laughs> uh, so let's call her um, I don't know Sarah let's go with Sarah okay. okay so I was showing Sarah a card trick once and she just had the biggest ear-to-ear smile when I was like is this your card or whatever I did with it and I'm like actually it was after that after that smile she said so are you a magician are you a professional magician or something and I'm like yeah, yeah. So thanks, <laughs> Sarah. Because of you, I'm now doing this professionally. Yeah, a lot of great ideas have, are inspired by women. women. Yeah, yeah. I'm just about to <laughs> try to impress someone. You'd be like, well, actually, I am this. <laughs> then, you, then you just go out and do it. <laughs> <laughs> the mentalist part. Though. Yeah. Ex- explain what that even is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the most <clears throat> black and white generic uh, way to describe mentalism is mind reading. Okay. But like. It's, that's just like a blanket statement. Like it goes into like this whole realm of like being able to like to read minds or give the illusion that you could read minds because ethics. So give the illusion that you could read minds Mm -hmm. or, you know, predict the future or manipulate matter, like bending spoons. I think you saw me bending spoons at that event. So like bending spoons or causing a book of matches to combust without you touching it, all sorts of crazy things like this. 
Wait, would it be ethics? Magicians have ethics? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of ironic. Um, no, back in like the 70s and the 80s, uh, mentalism had like a really big spike in popularity. Like all these late night talk shows, they would have mentalists come on. And there, uh, for quite a few of these guys, they would claim they had, they were born with these supernatural powers or aliens gave them powers like BS statements like this and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's this magician, uh, James Randi, or as he goes by the amazing Randi, and he's like, I think you guys are full of crap. And I'm gonna challenge you guys. And he has this uh, like uh, this uh, challenge where if you could prove your psychic power or your supernatural power uh, without the use of, you know, talking to people beforehand or using strings or whatever it be, uh, he will give them a million dollars. I believe it's a million dollars. I could be wrong on that, but it's a pretty nice sum of money that could pay for me to go to Harvard. Harvard, if you guys are listening, I'm looking for a scholarship. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, ever since then, um, I've been, I don't want to say afraid, but I, I don't want to ever cross that line of, uh, you know, where he'll catch wind of me and I'm like, oh, at first, oh my God, James Randi caught wind of me. And then, Oh no, he knows about me, you know. So I, I never want to cross into that realm. So if anyone ever comes up and they're like, "Can you really read minds?" I'm like, "It's up to you to decide," you know. So mm -hmm. it keeps the mystery alive, but at the same time, it gets me, you know, always got free. So gotcha. Do you explain any, any of your tricks, or is it just like all oh, it's a secret? It, it's I'm sorry to say it's all a secret. There is um this one thing that I do. Uh, where I it's I used to have it in my stage uh, show, and I would perform this trick, and at the end I'd break the magician's code and reveal exactly how I did it. But there's a catch. It's uh, like just right after they thought they knew how I did it, I fooled them again. What happens is I take an egg. I mean, I take a like a handkerchief and I put it into my fist and turn it into an egg, and the handkerchief travels into my pocket and I show everyone it's a fake egg. They can even touch and feel it and everything. And then I'm like, all right, so this is how the trick works. This is how you're gonna do backstage and blah, blah, blah. And then this time around, when I'm putting the handkerchief in my hand, the egg is there and they're like, oh yeah, I knew that part and everything. And I'm like, but here's, here's the catch, you know, and I make this funny statement, like if, if there's anyone ever behind you, you're not gonna do well with this because they're gonna see the egg in your hand. But if that ever happens, don't worry. You just snap your fingers. And then I, the hole that I was stuffing the egg into, I peel it off. I peel the hole off, and then I take a glass, and I say the magic words, uh, Rocky Balboa. I crack the egg, and it opens up and turns into a real egg. I'm trying to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not trying to sound stupid. I don't, I don't think I have the mental capacity to understand this shit. I'm like, I'm like trying to follow this shit in my head. I'm like, yeah, you lost me after the, the fake egg part. In a good way, like confused, or like, can you repeat the question? Nah, just gen general okay. confusion. I'm doing my job, and I'm just like yeah, going yeah, off yeah. of memory here. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What are some tricks you're proud of? <clears throat> oh man, um, it's uh, it's one that I've been doing ever since uh, I was a freshman in high school, but it really didn't have an impact until um, back in September uh, when I met my girlfriend. Uh, I mean, technically I knew her, but I didn't really know her well. Mm -hmm. uh, I perform magic in restaurants, and she caught wind that I was performing in a restaurant, and she came to see me perform there, and I was showing her this trick, and we just had that connection right there. little ladies, man. And I know, I know. Like, yeah, everyone gonna do my magic and get these women going crazy. <laughs> okay. Some magicians pull rabbits out of hats, I pull romantic relationships or potential romantic relationships out of my hands. I think we'll say condos, but <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Uh, that's my wallet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's this uh it's, it's this um calling it a trick is like saying like Beethoven or Kanye or any of these guys have a few good tunes. Like it's a work of art. This is a magical illusion. I, I no, 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 no. You didn't understand. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, uh, it's me. I, I take a deck of cards. I actually give it to someone like Shakoda. They take the card and we go through this whole thing. And in the end, I give them the deck of cards. 
uh, to place into their hands. Just this one is the truth. I saw it on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did? You saw it on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I saw this one. But this Insta- explain, though. Instagram plug party, if you guys want to follow me, it's at Alex Morgan Live. A L E X M O R G A N L I V E. Instagram, no. Twitter, and Snapchat. Will Buck become your agent. Oh, okay. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, all right. Will Buck become your agent. Will Buck. Will... <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You can catch the video of uh, me performing it in a uh, uh, clothing store that I buy from near my house. Um, and it's it's pretty cool. It just it you place the deck of cards into their hand. <coughs> I I'm like miles away from this deck of cards, and no one can accuse me of anything. I snap my fingers, they open their hand, and it's a solid block of glass. And uh, just watching her, just when when I met my girlfriend, I was just watching her. She's like, what? And I'm like, you're the one. So <laughs> <laughs> so it it was. It was it was that magical moment there. That's why it's my favorite trick. It's the sentimental value, not the. Well, I guess it could be the performance value because it does get some crazy points. I am, I am. On, if you had to uh, estimate off the top of your head, how many tricks do you know? Uh, not tricks, sorry. Yes. Don't worry, don't worry. What's the word you just said? Uh, I, it's 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 a piece of it's a piece of art. Okay, magic. yeah, fine. I don't want to I don't want to suspect you. No, crap. no, don't worry. It's it's cool. No, I know it's cool. But I still don't want to suspect your crap. Um, how many pieces of magic do you think that you that you like? Can you perform? Like, oh man, like, are we talking like? Like, what's in your arsenal? You X amount of time. time. Yeah. Uh, give us a full give a full showcase. Oh man, like I could probably put on like a four or five hour show, easily. Uh-huh. Four or five hours long. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Is that uh, typical for a magician? Oh, God, no, no, no. Is it like typical? Is that more or less? Oh, extremely more. Like, oh, um, okay. I'll give you The. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I would love to be on stage for five hours and everyone I know be like, well, you know, yeah, that sucks. Like, the, the stage lights. I'm like, it's something that I love, you know? So. Um, I see your passion when you're speaking. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Uh, but no, the, uh, for me, at least my show is like 45 minutes to an hour, and that's about the average for magicians, but like, um, a few really big name guys, like for instance, Copperfield, mm-hmm. uh, his show I believe is three hours long. Sheesh. But what, was, what would you like your ideal show to be? Obviously you know all these tricks, but if you had to put it together and face you know, it. Uh, for me, I'm not your stereotypical magician, because like every magician is like, oh, I can't wait to make it big and perform in Vegas. For me, I honestly could care less about Vegas. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, if I, if I got a phone call from like any casino owner on the strip tomorrow, I'd be out of here like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget about us. Oh, I won't, don't worry, free tickets, free front row tickets, don't worry. <laughs> um, my, uh, the ideal like uh, way that I wanna go is, um, y- yeah. No, I wasn't even thinking play. Oh. Silly on me, I was thinking more like the length of uh, Oh, the length of a show. Yeah. Oh, for me, like, well, uh, well, I mean, in, in terms of length, I, I'm pretty sure until the end of my career, 45 minutes to an hour is perfect. But if I start to really pick up like a following, then I'd say totally at most two hours. So like 90 minutes, two hours long is perfect for me. Okay. Um, but no, going on to what I originally thought you said, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, the ideal place for me to perform is actually, um, I, I, I always like seeing magic in unusual places like and that's kind of like what i like about life like you'll be in like a really dingy neighborhood and then you just see like a flower growing out of the sidewalk type of thing like you're not expecting it it's really nice it's really beautiful and it was just it i guess you could say without sounding cheesy and cliche it, it's magical seeing something like that mm-hmm. so for me my ideal place to perform is uh one of Three places aside mm-hmm. from Vegas, because you know, I mean, like I said, not Vegas, but you know what I said before. Yeah. Um, the first one is kind of contradictory. Uh, there's this touring show called The Illusionists. Um, they they're in New York like every winter for like a six week performance. Mm-hmm. Um, that's uh, a show that I want to perform in. I, they tour the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, lately I've been focusing on the fact that like I realized something I'm like I'm young you know how old are you I'm 21 oh yeah you're young as shit man. <laughs> I actually uh, speaking of that I'm not even kidding same birthday as Houdini 
I was with Jordan meant to do this. Destiny <laughs> one uh, uh, on March twenty fourth. Um, but no, like I was realizing I'm young, and I want to, you know, capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. um, so like something I, like I like to do as a person is I, I love going to concerts. Um, I think I was telling you about that, Kevin. Uh, so my like I'm, I'm actually going to be seeing Dead Mouse in yeah. September. I might be seeing Drake soon. Hey. Um, so I was like excited. I got a ticket right. master thing. I'm like, oh man, Drake. Gotta go. <coughs> Excuse um, me. You gotta get that to like big points. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, my ideal place is like one thing I hate when I go to a concert is they have. I'm I'm not insulting the performer, mm -hmm. but you go and see a band that not many people know about mm -hmm. or isn't as liked as the main performer. So I'm thinking, you know, something that would be cool is if I went and I was the opening act for band or a musician that I like to see or a producer that I like to see. And it wouldn't be like cheesy, like, hey guys, I'm going to do a car trip now. It's going to be like, I have the whole thing planned in my head. It's going to be like, picture like, like ultra music festival meets David Copperfield. Like that's the only way I can describe it. It's going to be done to music. It's going to be high energy and everything. And it's, if you could just look into my mind, that's the only way I could say it. It's going to look awesome if it ever does, when it happens, because optimism. I think... We'll talk off off the wax, but I think this would be like something perfect for like the warehouse event we went to for NYC. Oh Grind. yeah, you yeah. Remember they have like different booths of like so basically this is a group called New York City Grind. Mm -hmm. and they host these like massive warehouse events once a week. They come, they come, they came on the podcast a couple of times. Okay. Um, and they have like different booth booths set up of like different artists. Like they'll have someone over here selling paintings, someone over here getting tattoos, and oh, someone's on stage nice. rapping or singing. Like it's all like this one big art fest. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like for you to have like a little booth, people walk over there and do your little magic tricks. They say people have to be a high as fuck or drunk, so <laughs> they'll be <laughs> so right. amused by it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we'll talk about wax more about details, but I just want to get that out there. Well, wow. it was that's pretty that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a cool idea. Um you know, and, and as much as I'd love to say this is an original idea, um, credit uh, where credit is due, there's a magician uh, out in Nashville, uh, originally from Vegas, now in Nashville, by the name of Justin Flom. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, he, uh, do you guys know the country band, uh, Florida Georgia Line? I know Crunchy. I, I do. Like, oh, you do? Okay. I do. Um, so I lived in North Carolina for three years. Oh, so. Yeah, we saw I had that pump to Went to all white school. <laughs> you learn these things after a while. You know, <laughs> I live in, um, I live in North Jersey, like I live in the most <coughs> northernmost part called Sussex County. Oh yeah. And like don't get me wrong, it's a really nice scenic place and everything. Believe it or not, it still counts as the New York metropolitan area. Like I told Kevin that he's like, you're full of crap. <laughs> um everyone up there thinks they're in like like South Carolina or Georgia. And I'm like, no. Like everyone's <laughs> like I went to school, like high school with people, everyone's walking through the hallways with like camo but not like the cheesy oh it's like mossy oak yeah. hunting camo <laughs> and they have like they have modded pickup trucks and everything oh, that have yeah. like, new york city's right there you can just see it's like you can like, see it's it. a scones throw away <laughs> and it's like all we ever heard like whenever we'd have an assembly or something <coughs> at least one country song would play because that's the demographic area it's like oh my god everyone loves this wow um, but no anyways back to the original justin <coughs> he uh he opened up for florida georgia line before they come on stage. And it's like, you know, think about like, you go to see a band or a musician or whatever, and then some person that you could really care less about. And again, no insult to anyone that's ever been an opening act, uh, just comes out on stage, you know, you're like, yeah. But if a magician comes out on stage, you're like, all right, this is pretty interesting. Even yeah. if you don't like magic, you're just- It's a nice like, change of pace. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. Unexpected, yeah. yeah. And like, he did some really uh, interesting stuff. Like he, didn't do like the traditional, like, oh, we're gonna do a cool car trip. Like, he did a car trick, I remember, but it was pretty cool. Like, he started off with a car trip, and in the end, he had their car turn into um, two front row tickets. And he was out in the audience doing this, he had a camera with him, and he was just like, he took the card and placed it into his mouth, and then he pulled the card out, and it was now, and he showed his mouth was empty, two front row tickets for the people, the couple who had just performed. He's like, guys, you get to come up to the front of the stage now and everything. He did really cool stuff like that. So that's I'm like, cool that's the inspiration as to like what I'm going for. I'm not gonna be stealing his stuff, don't worry. Yeah. But it just like I'm like I like that, like that intimate yet in the same time public setting of performing. Yeah. So, how do you go about one 
like is there like a, a magic school like this sounds like a stupid mm-hmm. question but like is there a school for magicians how do you guys like get training and practice and all that stuff i mean it really just depends on your location like there's a uh, this competition called FISM, which they actually just had and it's been nicknamed the olympics of magic um and there's this one performer there shin lin uh, who has won I, at least once, I know that for a fact. In fact, he's currently on America's Got Talent. Wow. Um, he started magic, and like all magicians in Seoul, they go, I bet you learned that on YouTube. He literally started his magic uh, passion just by watching, learning how to do easy card tricks on YouTube. And, um, you know, he, he started doing it and was performing more and more. And then he heard through the grapevine about like, these magic competitions and everything and other places to learn. But uh, yeah, and he's like one of the biggest names in magic right now. But your uh, thing about magic school, there is a magic school. Um, it's there. There, to my knowledge, there are three magic camps. Uh, not schools per se, but camps. Okay. Uh, summer camps. I actually attended one of them. Uh, there's one up in Can- uh, Can- Can- Canada. I think it's Vancouver. Um, called Sorcerer's Safari Magic Camp. There's one down in Texas. I can't remember what that one's called, but the um, the OG, which started the whole Magic Camp trend, <laughs> which I'm proud to say I went, is a place out in Bryn Mawr, uh, at Bryn Mawr College for once a week. Where's that at? Uh, right outside of Philly. Okay. Um, it's called Tannen's Magic Camp, and Tannen's Magic Shop is located here. It's actually in Midtown, uh, across from the Empire State Building. Oldest magic shop in New York City, 1925. They survived the Great Depression. Like, the fact that, like, a hobby, niche, like, business yeah. like that could survive the biggest financial disaster. I didn't know it was a magic dream. shop. Me oh, man. New York. If, <laughs> if, like, whether you're a beginner or a pro, like, I have met so many famous magicians in there. Like, you guys know David Blaine, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I haven't met David Blaine, but I have met practically everyone that's worked for him on his team in there. Um, Aussie Wind is one of his guys. I met him in there once. Uh, uh, what's his name? Doug McKenzie, um, I, I met him in there actually the day before my uh, 19th birthday. He was in there, and I'm like, Doug? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, you're <laughs> Doug McKenzie, holy crap. So, and he's like, there's the most down to earth people. I mean, what does the magician's team do? Um, well, like, in like, big talks, like, like uh, on TV, like David Blaine, mm-hmm. or dare I say, Chris Angel. Um, magicians, we don't really like to say Chris Angel that much. Why? Wow. Uh, <laughs> like back when he did, uh, like not that I'm like he. From what I've heard, he's a great person. He's a really nice, down to earth guy. Like shit on from what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris, if you're watching, I'm sorry, man. Um, I but as a performer, there have been accusations that he's uh, stolen material from other magicians, mm-hmm. and like these are things that were like uh, copyrighted uh, performances, and he just took it and everything. He's unethical. He would lie to his audience. He'd go up to people and be like, we never met before, right? And I'm like, no. And on three different occasions, uh, I saw this video once, I can't remember what it was called, but it was three different occasions. He went up to this group of people and said, we've never met before, right? And they're all like, no. And he's like, he asked this woman, he's like, oh, I'm going to levitate you now and everything. And like in all the videos, they would show these things. And then he's asking like, oh, here's like, we're in this place and everything. And these aren't actors and everything. Well, the way the whole thing was set up, like you could see through, like there's something in magic called flashing where let's say I was doing a card trick and you saw me do something that you weren't supposed to see, yeah, which kind of reveals the method. I'm not, I'm not going to point out what Chris did, but there's a video uh, from Mind Freak where you could see through this street illusion that he was doing, uh, like literally, um, he. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to say it, so I'm going to be as vague as possible. He walked through a solid object, and oh, no, no, okay, he walked through the solid object, and um, you could clearly see it was like a machine thing. Like you could see the how, like if you looked closely, you could see a split right down the middle, and the thing bent outward, so he could like walk through when he was covered up and everything. So, sorry. Um, but anyways, no, I got uh, back to the original thing though about like a, a magician's team. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's pretty much like a whole movie production, like because um, magicians, especially when they get to be really big and famous, they're under you know the wire. Like like if you're with like a TV company like NBC, you sign a contract with the NBC or ABC, and they're like, look, 
for like the next 10 years, like at least every two years, we want you to release a magic special, you know? And you don't want to go out and, uh, you know, do things that you see like any magician on TV doing or, mm -hmm. you know, a very stereotypical magic <coughs> trick. Mm -hmm. So a magician uh, recruits a whole team of other magicians. Sometimes it's one magician, sometimes it's like as many as they want. Um, and they'll work together with him or her or them on, you know, the next on um, this trick or illusion that they're going to be doing in their show. Like um, this guy, um, obviously Wind that I mentioned earlier, he, I don't remember if he created it for uh, David Blaine or he was doing it and he's like, hey, this should be, this would look cool and special. Um, back in 2013, David Blaine did a special. And if you go onto YouTube and you look up like David Blaine, Will Smith magic trick or something, he was doing this card trick where uh, he had Will uh, choose to uh, take a card and then, you know, he shuffled the deck back into like this weird face up, face down mishmash thing. And he had him, he, he fanned out the cards. He said, Will, hold on to the cards like this. And he borrowed Jaden's phone and he took a picture of, of Will's hand and his entire family was there. No camera editing or anything. And he took, he gave him back the phone and uh, remember how I mentioned all the cards were like all, you know, fucked up basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the picture, the entire deck went back to normal, and the only card that was in reverse was Will Smith's card. So it was pretty cool. And this is something that Aussie Wynn made. Like again, I don't know if he if he was like, hey David, this would be a cool like he most probably because I believe he released it to other magicians to perform uh, around the time that this special came out. So yeah, that answered the question. Yeah. So how how much time do you spend like practicing like tricks and oh, not tricks? <laughs> no, no, don't worry. No, no, no. no. I, I, if it makes you feel any better, I call them tricks too. Okay. So magical arts. That's magical awesome. arts. Ooh, I like it. Um, well, it really depends. I mean, when I'm on off season, like when I'm off from school, like the summer right now, pretty much the second I wake up to the second I go to sleep is just spent um, just sitting. <coughs> over. Uh, coming up with new ideas for things that I could perform, like I'd be like, oh, well, well, like for example, like just throwing it out there, like what would it be cool if like I took a coin and I held it in my hand like this, and I opened my hand, and the coin vanished and reappeared in someone's pocket like that, like that would be cool. Now how do we go through doing that? And I just go through this whole trial and error thing. Like I have like a dozen notebooks in my room of just me writing down stuff. Like okay, what could I? How could I do this? And I have so much footage of me on my phone mm -hmm. of me just performing it. Where it's like I'm at the point where my phone's out, running out of space because I have so many videos of me just trying out different ideas of how yeah. it work. Is so, your girlfriend usually the first person you test these things on? Um, surprisingly, no. no. It's it's usually like I'll um, if it's something quick and visual, um, I'll film it for my Instagram uh, my Instagram story, mm -hmm. and I'll see how it works. Like if I see like a lot of people uh, are like. Like messaging me, being like, "Oh my god, that was so cool!" I'm like, I think I got something, and then I go into the family and friends uh, area. I'm like, "Hey, what do you guys think of this? Now that this is in person, like maybe you could have just worked on Instagram because it could be like a, like a camera trick or something." But if it, if it passes the personality test that I like to call like in person, mm -hmm. I'm like, "I think we're onto something," you know. So, currently, who are like three of the biggest magicians alive? Uh, now I'm gonna be a bit. Bit precise here when you say magicians do you mean like the whole spectrum of magic like mentalism and illusions and yeah everything? okay mm -hmm. uh in my opinion i want to say the biggest names in the field at the moment are shin lim the guy that i just mentioned a moment ago the it was and, sorry my criteria is obviously success acclaim and actual skill that's my criteria oh wait uh what success acclaim and skill like in my opinion, or yeah, you're right. yeah. He's oh, oh, in my so the scale would be your opinion, but like the success and the acclaim, but like a, a, a general yeah vote mm -hmm. type thing. Uh, I mean, totally Shin Lin. Like pretty much any time there's a magician on America's Got Talent, they have everyone's attention for the entire summer. Um, NBC, if you guys are watching, I'm, I'm ready for you guys. By the way, just hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, yeah, Shin Lim, he, I definitely want to say he's definitely hot right now. Uh, and I honestly wish him the best of luck for the rest of his days. Uh, Copperfield, he's a timeless classic. Like, um, even though he really was big back in the 80s and 90s, to this day, everyone still talks about, like, the stuff he did. Mm -hmm. And why? 
it's just because like he did some really insane original stuff like um actually here in new york he made the statue of liberty disappear uh he brought Wait, what, what? Yeah, yeah he can't just drop that anymore <laughs> yeah i mean um i think uh technically it's uh, my 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 home new jersey because that's where it, the statue is it's in our water so hey um that sure is it is but we don't tell people that oh yeah, you yeah, guys didn't that 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 yeah, totally. <laughs> um but yeah he uh, had a bunch of people i think over in new jersey on um ellis island or something mm -hmm. and he performed like his whole magic and illusion show and everything but his grand finale was he's like see the statue of liberty i'm gonna make it disappear and everyone is sitting in this theater um this open air theater and all he does is he just takes like this big 50, 60 foot curtain, he drops it for like a second, two, three seconds, he pulls the curtain down, the statue is no longer there, and he had like helicopters shining spotlights through it and everything. It was it was pretty cool. It's that's like a timeless thing. You well know? when you I see these tricks and you obviously know what goes into a lot of them. Do you know how he did that? I mean, not really. Because like everyone's like, oh you're a magician, you know everything. And I'm like, it's like it's like going to a doctor and saying like, oh, you know how every field of medicine works. It's like, no, I'm, I'm like a general physician. I can tell you a tiny bit about everything, you know? Oh, I'm, yes, I'm sorry. I don't talk to him. Okay, wait, 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 sorry, I'm like, like, I'll like, this is all. Like, <laughs> three, or like three things you've seen where you were just like shocked you, like you didn't know it was possible. You have um, no idea how this person pulled it off. Like, um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, Copperfield, when I saw his, uh, I was like like 10 or 11 when I saw it, because my uncle always told me, he's like, he's like, you like magic, you should really watch what Copperfield did back in the like 90s. I'm like, oh, cool. So I went and I watched, like, oh my God, that was amazing. I haven't seen it since then, um, but just that, and I kind of don't want to see it again, because I love that child like wonder that I had, like, whoa. And I just want to remember it like that forever. But um, mm. one thing that, um, even though I do know how it was done, it was still in the moment and the presentation that just blew my mind. Um, my favorite magician, Steve Cohen, who actually performs at the Watt Palace in Midtown, um, you know, magic show in a hotel. That's another thing I was trying to say. I like when you're talking about ideal performances, another ideal performance I have is in like a small intimate space, like uh, in uh, like a, a hotel room where it's like rented out for the evening and I just perform for a group of people in there. Uh, just that really cool thing. But anyways, going back to what I was originally saying, you know, he, in his show, he does this thing where he comes in, uh, or rather, you come into the show. He knows nothing about you. He doesn't have access to tickets or Facebook or anything. And you write down, um, he gives you a card, and it says, what's your name? And write three facts about yourself. So I wrote down, my name's Alex. Um, you know, uh, I recently went on a trip to Brazil. It was my first trip outside the country. Um, I am also a magician and I am learning how to speak Korean, which on a side note, I will say I'm not making much progress with. But keep in mind, this was back like 2015. Um, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that, especially with like North Korea tensions and everything like, ooh, you know. It was before all that, I promise. Okay. Um, but no, he. Um, I remember what he did it was, um, cause I didn't have a, a second to think about it. Uh, he took all the cards, in fact, he didn't even touch it. He had someone place all the cards into the box. Now this is the part that I'm still trying to figure out. He placed it in this box and he had, he took a, like a little school classroom bell. He placed it on top of it. So he said, if I ever open this box, you'll definitely hear me because the bell will ring. Uh, and the box was on like the other side of the room and he starts going through and he's like, you, 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 you play soccer and your, your jersey number is 28. You, you, your favorite ice cream flavor is mint chocolate chip, and like, is it mint chocolate chip? No, that would have been that would have been weird though. That been, <laughs> <laughs> but, I like it, I like it, but it's not my favorite. Oh, no one hates on it though, you know. Yeah. Uh, but he goes through like this. <laughs> it's it's a good flavor. It's a classic. What well, about it? Um, but he goes through like this, <laughs> this like whole thing, and he got, uh, he got to me at this point. And he said, he pointed to me, he's like, you young man, because I was 18 at the time, and technically I still look very young, so. Yeah, I have no idea you were 21. I, I mean, <laughs> don't tell NJ trains it, but I, I, I'm thinking about getting the, the, the uh, child discount on the trains. Oh yeah, I, I, 
I can appreciate this part that doesn't help. So I take it back when I said MJ Transit if you're listening. <laughs> but no, um, please note that was a joke. Don't have me arrested MJ Transit. Um, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll be all right. <laughs> Uh, but no, he, he pointed to me, he's like, young man, and he points to this other guy that was halfway across the room. This guy and I never met before, we never spoke. He's like, when I count to three, I want you guys to say your names out loud. One, two, three. We both said Alex, and I was like, Alex, holy shit. Like, just uh, instantly, I'm like, oh my god. And um, yeah, that, that was something that blew my mind. And uh, my favorite mentalist, when he finally came to America last summer, he did something similar. But... Like, it was like a thousand times more hard to figure out and impossible. Uh, before he came on stage, like, he had a card, uh, Darren Brown, he, it wasn't even him, he had his, the people in the speed, uh, feeder hand out the cards, and it was like, what's your name, when were you born, and it was, um, what's, uh, like, what's your favorite memory, or what's something that you, what, what's your occupation? And on the back, it was like, it's like, write a big secret that you have that you wouldn't want anyone to know. And I'm like, okay, this is juicy. I trust you, Darren Brown, who reads minds. Yes. So <laughs> I wrote down that um, uh, my family, uh, I come from a family of undertakers. My dad's a funeral director. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been like that ever since they came to America back in the 1800s. So I wrote down, my, I, my parents don't know this, but I'm not going to be continuing on in the family business. Um, and... Uh, like I filled out everything else. I handed, uh, I didn't even hand it to him. They took it, they placed it in this big clear salad bowl at the front of the stage. And he came on stage in the second act and he blindfolded himself, like with like medical gauze, like his whole face was blindfolded. And he just started like grabbing these things and they're sealed in envelopes again. And he just, he's just like holding it above his head, making a fist, crumpling it up. He's like, I'm predicting that there's someone in the audience whose initials are A and and they're sitting in row J and I'm like, this can't be happening. <laughs> and I'm like, hi. And then he goes, okay, I, I, I want to sense that your, your your name is Alexander, but you don't go by Alexander, you go by Alex. I'm like, correct. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. <laughs> um, and then he goes, okay, uh, you, you, you were born, uh, I, I want to say you're about 20, 21 years old. I'm like, yeah, I'm 20. Uh, and he's like, okay, good. Uh, and on the card, I wrote my occupation as a student. And uh, I, I, there has to be some logical answer behind this, but I can't remember. But I wrote down, you know, I'm a student. I study business. And he goes, I sent you a, a business student and everything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, because I wrote it on the card and everything. I'm still amazed because, like, he's blindfolded and he didn't open the envelope and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah. And then he goes, but you don't want to go into like any business position, not primarily, and I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, I sense that you want to, you want to be a lawyer, correct? I'm like, holy shit, yes, I do want to be a lawyer. If, if magic doesn't work out, I want to go to the law field. So I'm like, yeah. And he goes, but hang on, you have a secret. I'm like, oh, fuck. My dad is sitting right next to me. And he's like, I sense that on top of the fact that you want to be a lawyer, this is obviously a given, but your family doesn't know that you won't be, that you'll, you'll stop continuing in the family industry. And I'm like, yeah. And I, and I didn't write this down on the card. And to this day, I don't know, maybe it was something my dad wrote down that was a tip off. And he's like, your family's industry is funeral directing the mortuary field. I'm like, holy shit, yes. And my dad is just, he's not even mad. He's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> uh, so, and it was like, I'm like, Oh my god you know like to this day it's like even though i kind of have a tiny idea as to how it was done it still is like it keeps me up at night so does that answer your question for yeah. like an amazing thing that i once saw so but yeah that's oh man now you're making me think about it again <laughs> <laughs> what are your so you said if magic doesn't work out then law you yeah. seem so passionate about magic. What about law would even intrigue you? I mean, and, and like, here's the thing. I'm, I'm pushing law off until like I'm 129% sure magic isn't going to work out for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I'm 50 and I'm still only performing magic in restaurants, I'm going to be like, okay, you know what? It's one thing to do this as a hobby now, but I think it's going to work, you know? But until that day comes, though. Yeah. Um, the actual just party. <laughs> uh... Like, um, what really inspired me to go into law is um, I was actually bullied a lot throughout uh, middle and high school, 
and it got to a point my senior year where just I was having a great time in high school. There were a few things here and there, but nothing major. But it was this one thing where um, this teacher that I had, who will remain nameless, um, didn't say anything about uh, an anti-Semitic slur that was made about me in class. Uh, with that being said, it goes without saying I'm, I'm from a Jewish, uh, I have Jewish in my family. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at this time in high school, I was failing a class that I was doing very well in. Um, it was just like overnight, just boom, 56. I'm like, this is unlikely. Uh, so it goes without saying that really upset me and that ruined my day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he starts, uh, we were reading um, uh, Scarlet Letter. And our teacher's like, okay, we're gonna be wearing our own scarlet letters for a bad habit. They have to break like A for if you're absent a lot in class or S if you swear a lot in school. And it's like easy hunter you wear that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I'm thinking like, what can I do? Like, all right, I come to class late, so maybe an L, but I never take L's. Okay, okay <laughs> there we go, there we go, there we go. Um, <laughs> but no, um, I'm sitting there in class and across the room I hear it's dead quiet because like, we're writing down things that we we're planning on giving up for this project. He says, hey, Alex, you should wear a Star of David like the Jews had to wear in the Holocaust. And everyone knows I'm Jewish, so it wasn't like a yeah. joke. Uh, and I'm like, and I just looked at him and I'm like, dude, I'm not having it today. I'm just not having a good day. Now, before this, he was a friend. Um, and if any of my, if I ever, like, I, I bust my friend's balls all the time. But if they ever tell me, like, I'm not having it, I'll just like, okay, I'm sorry, and I step away, you know. Um, but I'm not child. It's like even that is like still yeah, like the too. you All know. Um, but he, he does this and everything, and he goes he says something again. I hear him say the words Alex and Jim, and I say you want to repeat that again because it's dead quiet. Keep in mind my teacher is like three feet away from him at his mm -hmm. desk at her desk, um, and uh, he goes oh I said that being that you're a Jew you have to wear the colors yellow and blue or blue and white. And this other kid chimes in whose mom is a teacher at the school and he goes yeah you know israel like where jews come from and i remember there's this one girl in my class who never liked me for whatever reason i never said anything major but she was one of those uh stereotypical folk that wear the uh, the mossy oak and drives those big pickup <laughs> trucks like it was hot you know um, <laughs> uh, but she just looked at me and like i had this look on my face where i'm like i can't believe you're actually saying this like i just had like this look on my face and she goes oh like oh you're a bitch you know mm. um and i like i wasn't thinking when i said this but i just said like i'm not gonna say the guy's name but i'm just calling josh i'm like josh shut the hell up yeah. and my teacher heard me and she goes what did you say and i ha have you ever had like a moment where you say something but your brain didn't have a chance to process it yeah so she said excuse me and in that moment i said you're excused and i'm like oh shit why should I say that? <laughs> so I'm expecting her to be like, all right, let's talk in the hallway or detention or at the very least, which is not justified, but whatever, suspension, any of these things are going through my head. She does something a thousand times worse. She takes a, a spray bottle and she comes up to me and she starts spraying me in the face, spraying me in the hair, and then she grabs my shirt and pulls it back and starts spraying me down the back. Everything, the entire class is laughing. And you know how people are nowadays. Yeah. I don't remember, but it could have been very well happened. Someone whipped open their phone and could have started like filming me and it could be saved on their phone. You know, anything can happen. Um, but, and I'm thinking in my, in this moment, like I could do one of two things. I could either laugh this off or I could run out of the room crying. Cause I'm not gonna hide my masculinity. I was literally this close to crying. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'll just laugh it off. Ha ha ha, oh my god, I'm covered in water, or whatever I said. Um, and yeah, then uh, I just, I went home, my parents were like, well, how was school today? I told them, and I just broke down crying. They called up my uh, guidance counselor, and they called her up, and they're like, look, we heard what happened, this was not cool. And let me just jump this whole thing along to get to the end. Uh, I wasn't in class the next day, because my guidance counselor wanted to talk to me about the whole ordeal. And she gave, without, from what I heard, without saying my name, she gave an anonymous tip off that I'm the reason as to, as she put it, can't have fun in class anymore with the water bottle. And, wow. you know, that she might get fired over this thing. You know, oh, didn't need to bump the mic. That's cool. Um, so yeah, it was uh, people at that point, literally, and I'm in college now, and people that I went to high school with, they still see me on campus and they'll, they'll throw me a dirty look 
or they'll be like, hey, fuck you, you know, you're fired and everything. I'm like, you're, are you kidding me? We're in college now. Yeah. You, these guys are going to take it to their graves. I know it. Um, but I remember <clears throat> after about a day or two of uh, this whole thing going on with people just like throwing death threats at me and everything, I just remember I was driving to school one morning. It was December 11th, 2015. And I remember I was driving to school and I could, if, if I was driving on my way to school with you guys, I could point at the very spot I was driving past where just in my head, I don't remember why, my brain was just like, we're going to be a lawyer when we grow up. Because, like, I've always gone through with, like, bullying and everything. Um, and I'm like, it's not cool. My schools have done little to nothing in the past about it. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I want to be a lawyer. And as I thought about it, I'm like, no, yeah. Because the world's not a good place. But if I could be at least one person that's better than the average, that's fine. You know, if I could also help the world be a better place in that type of way, mm -hmm. you know. So, didn't mean to throw it onto a really depressing topic there, but... Now you know why I want to be a lawyer if magic doesn't work out, so. You better than me, though. <laughs> she would have, she have flew across that room. Yeah. This is back in 2015, you said? 2015, December 8th, 2015. Yeah, she went across the, the classroom. What a bottle. Yeah, and everyone. That's some Sussex County shit right there. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't like, she, she definitely had like an in for me because like, yeah. she always like insulted me in front of my class. Like she, I once, I uh, forgot a uh, paper that I was doing at home, and I have an IEP. I, I, actually, I was telling you about this. Uh, uh, and your girlfriend was telling me too and everything. Uh, and an IEP, for those that don't know, it's, uh, I, I, I medically do have uh, diagnosed ADD. So, you know, if you have ADD, you know, you could really only focus on one thing at a time. And in this case, it was me focusing on passing this class, you know. Uh, so I printed out my paper and I got to school, and I, I remember I opened my bag and like, Oh crap, I forgot my project at home. I'm like, you know what? Let's tell her. Maybe she'll be cool. So I went up to her and I'm like, hey, look, I'm so sorry. I forgot my project at home. Uh, I understand if you're going to take 10% off or half off, but can I please turn it in tomorrow? Which, by the way, she's not supposed to take 10% off or anything because my IEP, she's supposed to be like, no, it's expected that you're going to do this. Don't worry. Just don't forget to bring it in tomorrow. Yeah. That's what she was supposed to say or something like that. But she goes, no, well, why should I give you any credit or anything? She made me go up and present my project without any note cards, without any PowerPoint, without anything. And she, and I, what really pissed me off was it would have been justifiable if she was like, okay, everyone that didn't do their project or forgot it has to present. But she went through the entire classroom and someone's like, no, I don't have my project. And she's like, okay, turn it in tomorrow, 10% off. Like, no, don't, you're gonna be doing what you did to me. And I remember she was like, I was up there and everything, people were taking pictures of me, and she was just being really rude and disruptive while I was doing my presentation. So, we're here to talk about magic. Let's change yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Yes. What's next for you? Um, well, currently, uh, before the end of the summer, I'm planning on coming back into uh, New York, probably like uh, Midtown or here in the Financial District downtown. Mm -hmm. And I was gonna hit up a few restaurants uh, and be like, hey, I, I do this and everything, especially here in downtown when Wall Street closes and everything, I think would be an awesome uh, way to close the day, especially on a Friday, like yeah. the hard week that you have in the financial industry. Just you're there, you're like, hey, it's the weekend, we're gonna relax, we're gonna have a drink, maybe a, like an appetizer. And then the magician comes up and they really get the party going, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I start performing, <laughs> uh, you know, and everything. Uh, or I was gonna also advertise, like, hey, let's do a dinner show and everything. And see where it takes me but uh, mainly at the moment I'm, I'm really trying to grab the attention of um, uh, music producers and bands like going on what I was saying before with like the opening of a concert uh, grab, grabbing their attentions and their managers attentions um, currently um, I'm saying this because if anyone knows anyone uh, you would greatly help me out uh, Kygo uh, and his manager Miles Miles Shear, I believe is his name. I'm, I'm trying my best to catch their attention without, you know, I mean, I have emailed them in the past, but I want to cool it just so they're like, I don't want to be placed on a block list. I'm tagging Kygo in every post. <laughs> please yeah. do, please do. Retweet at Kygo. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, it would just be like so cool to open up for him because like what I'm wearing right now actually is pretty much like what I'm actually planning on wearing uh, on stage from here on out. Because one thing, like I was going on before, like I'm young, let's take advantage of it, you know. 
I walk on stage in my college show and my gimmick for the college show is who better to entertain college students than a college student. Yeah. And I, I, I'm looking back at it at my past performances and I kind of cringe but laugh at the same time. It's like I walk on stage and like, like that Steve Buscemi meme, like, good evening fellow children and kids uh -huh. my age that study in the <laughs> university college level. And I'm wearing this three-piece suit. Like if you go onto my website, which I will not be giving out the name, but you'll probably find it through my Instagram, so I'm screwed either way. Um, <laughs> on the cover of my website, it's me. I wear this blue three-piece suit and this like maroon tie. Swag. It's, I mean, it's a nice yeah. outfit, don't get me Swag. wrong. But when you're performing for like a group of kids your own age, I, like I walked on stage and they're like, in college? Where, where does he go to school? Like Princeton? Like what? <laughs> so, um, Princeton, if you guys are listening, I'm looking for a scholarship too. Um, <laughs> so it's, um, don't discriminate. Uh, yeah, here, you know, let me, let me carry my card so you can get my website. No, I'm going to lay it out with your card. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, uh, so like I'm trying to go into like the more really designer street clothes. Uh, thing because like everyone my age whenever they go out to a party they put on really nice street clothes and everything Yeah, and I'm probably making everyone that's listening to this cringe because they're like no one says really nice street clothes It's just clothes or going out. I was gonna let you rock. Yeah, it's not <laughs> <Jersey. Yeah. laughs> I, no, I mean like because here's the thing like I like I feel like ashamed because like of my uh, My family's business and everything why well, I mean I'm not ashamed of it. I'm, oh. I'm getting on to the fact like like all I really know I, I can tell you everything there is about dress clothing like I could tell you about what a type of shoe, what the design of a shoe is, who makes it, the tie, how to yeah. tie a tie, how to wear a suit. Like my brother collects sneakers and everything, and he's like, "Yeah, I just got Yeezys, I just got Jordans." And I'm like, "Yeah, I just got Peter Millar uh, loafers." You know? <laughs> I know you're talking about it. No, no. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to like wear that. And I'm like, I'm watching. It's so cringy, but I'm like watching a lot of guys on YouTube and just seeing like what the average like outfit that is casual but at the same time eye-catching is so yeah, um, no, that makes sense i'll be honest with you i i'm never looking to one on youtube though but i have like i um when i was like your age like i always knew i wanted to be an attorney um, oh, so i used to okay. always like dress like how i thought attorneys should look mm -hmm. all the time like I used to go out of college and have like dress shoes on sometimes like because that's always what i thought um and now i'm like on the way other side of the spectrum where the week is like I'm like really like trying to find myself and dress how I how I actually want to dress but then you just gotta find a nice little balance. Yeah. Um don't be going out and spending all this money on Yeezys man. You just uh, gotta go out there and be yourself. But you also don't wanna be like too buttoned up and too uptight. You know, just gotta be loose you twenty one, enjoy your life, man. I know yeah. that's that's what I'm trying to tell myself because it's like I like the three piece suit, in fact, like when you met me, I was wearing like a modern tuxedo because, like, my dad gave me his tuxedo from like back in the 90s to wear it at the hand me down. I'm like, Dad, no one wears this anymore. He's like, Of course they do. I'm like, Yeah, if they're 80, they wear it. So I'm like, I'm like, For my birthday, just get me like a tuxedo. And I showed him the type I wanted. He got it for me. I'm like, Thank God. So I, I now wear like that modern, it's like the, the navy blue or the dark blue. With like the black uh, lapel tuxedo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I don't look that weird at uh, black tie events anymore. Cool. Yeah. Um, and I used to wear, oh god, I'm screwed if you guys ever find this on Instagram. I used to wear, um, like this Irishman's like cap. I, uh, I look, I cringe when I think about it too. No, we all have past. I used to wear <laughs> do rags and baggy jerseys. Right, yeah, so <laughs> and like, like this is when I was like oh, seven. <laughs> This is when I was like 17, 18, 19 years old, I'd wear this stuff. So I'm like, I, I like, I must have been born in a time machine because like my, my whole wardrobe isn't matching up with my age type of thing. Um, I wore that and <coughs> I, I had, I had a, a, like, not a bright red, but like this really nice tie, which I still do wear, it's a nice tie. Um, and like this, this maroon and red pinstripe shirt. And it wasn't even a suit, I wore this, this, brown like a uh, houndstooth jacket and black corduroy uh, brown corduroys and everything and i walked on stage looking like that I'm like yeah everyone's gonna know i'm 19 if it was the 1800s <laughs> <laughs> and like like whenever 
<laughs> like, throwback Thursday, hashtag TBT makes me so uncomfortable because I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I did all the pictures that I took from that of wedding last week. They're really gonna have to see my true colors. <laughs> so, like, I only have like one or two pictures on my Instagram of me from back in the day. Yeah, that's what you gotta do, man. You gotta, so, it's good to refresh your IG sometimes. You gotta yeah, no. start over, man. Shut that shit down. You got some things that are, that's, that's too embarrassing that was cool back in the day. <laughs> it was shit. never cool. What are you talking about? Well, not that for me, it was, but. but uh, yeah, well, but so, can, you came to your senses, that's all that matters. I have a question. If I'm a venue, why would I want to book you? Ooh. Oh, well, uh, because I no longer wear that, that ridiculous <laughs> mock three-piece suit. I forgot to mention, I also wore a sweater vest with it, too. So, yeah, I know. I was like Carlton Banks. Like, oh, I'm do this. <laughs> Sorry, I was watching like, a ton of Fresh Prince in the past week. Um, but why would you want to hire me? Well, for starters, I, I use this to fund my way through college. It's partially me and partially my parents. Uh, luckily, they're like, whatever's more expensive, we'll pay for. So if it ends up at the end of the semester, books are more expensive. They pay that. If at the end, it's classes, they pay for classes. But at the end of the day, regardless, I use the money that I make from performing to fund my way through college. So why not, you know, give uh, the stereotype millennials don't want to work? Why not give a millennial that actually does want to work a chance? Um, but why? Aside from no, the I'm getting to that. The goodness of our hearts. Because, like, you know, I, I don't do these cheesy magic tricks that you see a bunch of magicians like do. Not every magician, but a lot of magicians, typically older magicians, doing. Uh, and even some guys that I know my age. No offense, guys, I love you, I just think they're kind of cheesy. Um, like, for me, I, I hate doing things where it's like, uh, like, I'll pull like a handkerchief out of a hat and it says, like, happy birthday and there's a rabbit on it I'm like oh my god don't do that like i i only like to do things with like things that people are familiar with like cards and coins or someone's phone or a business card um so you get that and on top of that uh, like i said i'm also a mentalist so whenever i'm performing i'll put a spin on something uh like when I, like mid performance i'll just uh i'll be like this is a this is a your card and everything, but you know, I, I just want to see, like, if you, I just look at your thumbprint on the card, I'm going to say that uh, you, you were born in um, February. You were born in February, where did you grow up? No, no, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, so things like that and everything. By the way, no prior contact between any of us when I had. That's so, I can attest to that. That is true. Uh, you know, and you get that, you get that, it's like, I call it like the fusion restaurant of the entertainment industry, because it's like, you can go in and you're expecting Mexican food and French food, but you get, <coughs> you get a card trick and you get your mind read, you know? So. Sheesh, okay. <laughs> is, that, right. is that a good selling point? That is a good selling point. Um, oh, and also, someone once told me I look like Ed Sheeran, which I don't see at all. Is it the red hair? Because, like, if that's all you're looking at, no. Okay. Hey. <laughs> My girlfriend thinks Ed Sheeran's attractive, so I got back on for me. There you go, so, man. Uh, yeah, right here. Oh, uh, yeah, one last question. Uh, over the course of eight years, how have you grown as a magician? Oh, totally. I mean, I will say, <coughs> and this this is kind of going to be contradictory because it's like a humble brag type of thing, but... Back then, um, I was so stuck up as a performer. I wouldn't even want to call myself a performer because no performer should be stuck up. Unless it's their character and like you can kind of see through it, it's just an act. But like I was so like, I'd walk into the room and I'd make sure everyone knew I was there. Um, and I thought I was the best magician around. Like if I'd ever mess up on um, like a card trick, or I'd, you know, I'd be in the middle of reading someone's mind, I'm like, you were born in February. And they're like, no, I wasn't. I'm like, yeah, you were. And I just played it off and everything. I'm like, yeah, you totally were, though. I'm like, this isn't your card. Or they're like, hey, I saw what you did. I'm like, shut up. No, you didn't. Like, um, back then, mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I know, believe me, if I had a time machine, I'd slap myself in the face. Um, but it just, ever since, like, I, I was, I, I once was watching footage, like, a compilation of me for performing at an event. And watching it and I just I just like I had that cold feeling mm. where I'm like oh my god I'm, I'm just watching how I'm treating people and everything and I'm, I'm more in the moment I'm just more focusing on the performance but I'm saying things and people are like oh my god you know and it's not like like I like I like to bust chops when I perform nowadays but I do it in like a safe way so everyone knows that I'm just joking and it's not to be taken seriously but back then it was like 
not that I said anything rude, but just I thought I was like the hottest person around and like my ego was just through the roof and it made people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, like like I said, I'll like bust a joke and I'll be like, um, I, I was like, <coughs> something funny a few weeks ago, I was performing at a restaurant and this woman, I'm like, I was saying like, uh, I was making like jokes and everything. Uh, and I'm like, you're not from New Jersey, are you? And she's like, no, I'm from Tennessee. And I'm like, well, well, to New Jersey. You make fun of people, or whatever I said. Mm. And she's like, she's like, you're mean and everything. And everyone's at the table is like, ha! You know, okay, that's hilarious. Because um, New Jersey. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah. Um, and putting that aside, like back then, it was, because like, I, I, I took the jump too soon. Like, I'm like, Here, here's the fine line. Like, here's hobby and here's career. And I was like this, I was crossed in the middle and I would just focus it more on it as a glorified hobby that could make me money. And now I take it seriously. Like I'm like, this is my job. I want to put on the best damn performance I ever have because I want these people to book me again. I want them to recommend me for other events. And you never know, someone at the end of that, you know, connection chain could have that ultimate connection of Kygo and manager Miles Shear that could get me to go on stage just putting that out there <laughs> so but yeah I mean it's true because like yeah. especially through all my business classes it's like like one of my professors she's like networking is a magic word keep it in mind then she, we're talking and she's like you're a magician that's like the ultimate icebreaker whenever you go out to a, mm -hmm. a, a corporate event even if you're not performing there just have a deck of cards on you and show them a card trick or, or just you know do like a mind reading thing that you do and I'm gonna tell you, I've actually, uh, two bookings I've had were just from going to like an event like that. And where I put my ego aside and everything, I'm there and I'm talking. And I don't wanna say I was bashful about it, but I just waited for them to be like, oh, what do you do for a living? Because back then I'm like, hey guys, I'm a magician. I'm a mentalist. I do this, I do that. And everyone's like, okay, who invited the pain in the ass? You yeah. know? <laughs> but um, I was at an event uh, back in uh, November at uh, Dewey's Pub in Midtown. And um, I was walking around, it was for startups, because one of my friends, he has a startup. Um, by the way, his Instagram, because I'm being a good friend here, it's at Seahorse Live. He does like an underwater drone thing. It's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, so anyways, he had a free ticket. He's like, hey Alex, do you want to go? I think this would be great. I'm like, uh, you just said networking event. You didn't have to say anything else. Yes, we'll go. Um, and when I was there, I was walking up to people and everything. They're like, so what do you do? Uh, what's your thing? And I'm telling them, I'm like, I'm a magician. And I also said on top of that, I'm also a, a business slash marketing student. So I, you know, I take my magic and I take my mentalism and everything. And I incorporate it into a way whenever, oh shit, sorry. You're fine. Whenever like a company hires me to mainly like restaurants and everything, because that's my selling point is that I incorporate my magic into advertising the restaurant. Um, I'm telling them like, yeah, this is what I do I'll, in the middle of like doing a car trick or in the middle of reading someone's mind or whatever it may be, I'll be like, hey, check out ABC company, you know? And they're yeah. like, oh, that's pretty cool. You're, you're using something that you love, not to mention, and on top of that, you're using something that you're you learning in school and they're like, that's awesome and everything. And I'm walking around and people, uh, I, I know I said before, I always say that when I went in the room, they're like, hey, let's get everyone in the circle, let's tell everyone what you do. Um, I, people, some people didn't hear it and everything, so, you know, people were going up, they're like, oh, you're a mentalist, that's cool, let's, you know, read my mind and everything, and then on top of that, people that didn't come in, they're like, oh, so what do you do? And I'm like, well, I'm actually a magician, I gave a whole spiel again and everything, and this one guy that I met, um, he's a part of a law firm up in Stanford, in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and about like a week or two after that, uh, event, he sent me an email, he's like, Alex, it's, uh, it's, I remember his name. If he's listening, he's gonna be like, "It's this name, man. Come on, we hired you." Um, but I can't remember his name. So let's again call him John. Uh, he's like, "Hey, it's John from the law firm up in Connecticut. We, I, I remember your magic was so cool, uh, and like you, you read my mind and everything. You told me, you know, my mother's maiden name or whatever. Um, we're having a Christmas party in a few weeks, and we'd love you to be there." And I'm like, uh, "Connecticut law firm Christmas party? I will be there." Mm -hmm. You know. So I went and I performed for him, and then he's doing what I absolutely love, where he makes a recommendation to another partner, and it's not just some other, not it's not just like some small town business that he made a recommendation to. He, he recommended me to Merrill Lynch, wow, Bank of America, and they called me up. They're like, "Hey, we heard from the law firm that you performed for that you're pretty awesome." 
and we want you to be there and everything. And I got to perform for them at uh, the uh, Stanford Yacht Club, which I'm like, oh man, I, I'm just looking back at all my teachers that are like, you'll never make it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll never make it. And I took like a selfie in front of like all these sailboats and everything. That's amazing. And, like, I'm like, this is proof that I can do it. And this is proof for many more better things to come. That's, so. that's the perfect place to end. But, you know, uh, before we go, is it cool if I do one thing? Of course. So, you know, um, I uh, wanted to start off with um, like a card trick, kind of just to warm up and everything, if that's cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to be coming away from the mic, so it's going to be a bit hard to hear me. But, Drill, do you know how to shuffle deck cards? Do I know how to shuffle? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Here you go. And I also have this little chart if you, <laughs> if you want to drop them on there. Oh, the cards? Yeah. Do I shuffle them? Yeah, go right ahead, shuffle them. Oh, okay. Have light. Yeah. Yes, please. All right, cool. I'm shuffling cards, people. Look at me. <laughs> Just one shuffle. Just one shuffle. Right, guys. Check out the YouTube fun. channel. Yeah. All right. That is I mean, it's, you got to gotta check it out, guys. Come on. Let's see. Or you can use your imagination. I'm gonna put this down so they get a full one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's been over here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll try and get this mic over towards me. So, all right, cool. So, Jarrell, as I go through, tell me when to stop, whatever you want. Stop. Here, take a look at that card. Yep. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, I'm gonna take a, a wild guess and say that your card uh, was red. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, here, here's where it could be a bit interesting, because that was a 50-50 shot that I had, because, you know, there's uh, 26 black cards in the deck and 26 red cards in the deck. Mm -hmm. Here's where it's going to get a bit harder, okay? Um, your card, I think say it was a diamond? It was. Now, that was like a bit of a, that was still 50-50, but if I went right from the start, it would have been 25%. But here's where we're really going to make it interesting. Sorry for all the sniffing, I'm getting over a bad allergy attack. So, um, I'm gonna go through every single card and each one I want you to say no. Go ahead and lie to me, okay? So, was you it- You lie to me. You lie to me, just say no all the time. Okay. Was it the Ace of Diamonds? No. Was it the Two of Diamonds? No. Was it the Three of Diamonds? No. Was it the Four of Diamonds? No. Five of Diamonds? No. Six of Diamonds? No. Seven of Diamonds? No. Eight of Diamonds? No. Eight of Diamonds? No. Seven of diamonds. No. Six of diamonds. No. Uh, eight of diamonds. No. Seven of diamonds. No. It was the seven of diamonds, wasn't it? <laughs> the honest yes. here. The yes. That was that was pretty cool. And keep in mind, you shuffle this deck so you can see that there's no multiple seven of diamonds in there and everything, right? So, but you know what's um really crazy though is the seven of diamonds. I don't actually have a seven of diamonds in here. Look in your pocket. Which one? Your uh, pants pocket. <laughs> it's, no, I'm kidding. I'm not that good. I'm not that good. Oh, I'm, I'm not about that to good. say. I'm like, wait, what? I was about to say. These tight. <laughs> I mean, I am from New Jersey, so I know how to pickpocket. But beside that, <coughs> no. But look, I wanted you to see. I, I do have a card in here, um, but you want to know it's really interesting. It's it didn't actually. Travel. It's been in here the entire time. So how you saw the seven diamonds was beyond me. In fact, I really made it stand out because I had this different back on it. As you can see, it's kind of reversed from the rest of the deck, right? Let's look at that. <laughs> I only card in the entire deck, but you know, it's um. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where it's a bit weird because now I have this this one different card in my deck that has a different back than all the others. So all I have to do is just take it, give it a bit of a rub, just like this, and it turns into all the other cards in the deck. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Hey, yeah, you gotta check out the YouTube to see what just happened. Yeah, definitely. Wow. But you wow. know, one more thing before we want I wanna go. Um going off of what I said before. Mm. I also mentioned I'm a mentalist. Um, so, 
before I go into any of this, Jarrell, I just want to clarify, you and I have had no prior contact before. This no, not before podcast, today. Right? Yeah. In fact, I think we met, what, like an hour ago? Yep. So, I haven't even known him at all, basically. Um, so, what month were you born in? February. Okay, cool. Um, but we kind of got through that before, so it's not that amazing anymore. But in February, um, it's a it's a weird month because you know there could be X amount of days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so were you born on a leap year? If you know, I don't believe so. No, you don't. Okay. Um, let's say. Uh, what day were you born? What number? Oh, say it again. The twelfth. Okay, good. So we're making progress here, and uh, you know what? Um, this is making me feel tingly. Yeah. I'm doing my job. Guys. I'm doing my job. Um, you know, uh, just by looking at you, I want to say you're twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that would mean that you're born in nineteen ninety, correct? Actually, no. No. Oh, nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. Uh, I, for some weird reason, I thought it was twenty seventeen right now, so that's why. Uh, so it's uh, still a good guess on the. Head. It was a pretty good guess, right? Yeah. But you know, one other thing. Um, by the way, this is a. This is yours to keep. Don't say I don't give you anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have your phone with you? I do. Can I borrow it for a second? Do you have a lock on here? I do. Oh, don't, don't unlock. Oh, okay. Where uh, are you going to unlock it? We'll go ahead and unlock. Okay. I want to unlock it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, by the way, I just wanted to point out the nice cool and out wallpaper we got here. You're going to have to send that to me. That's what we do. You know, That's pretty cool. I want to tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> um, if you could, uh, again, kind of before, I'm gonna say a bunch of numbers, kind of like with the cards. Oh, you about to call out my passcode? I won't say it. I won't say it. Oh, oh I it. Like just love it. <laughs> <laughs> we just got through it. <laughs> so, um, actually, you know what? Just to, just to, uh, no, go ahead. That's fine. No, if uh, here, if you could do me a favor, right here mm -hmm. on the calculator, uh, type in your passcode. Uh, or, or keep it away from the camera so that I, I can see how it is. I just, I just changed it not so long ago. And when you're done, lock the screen. All right, you got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, um, again, I'm gonna go through what I just did mm -hmm. with the cards, and I'm gonna say a bunch of numbers. Just the first number. Okay. Is the first digit, and, and you know, just again, keep lying, saying no. Mm -hmm. Is the first digit a zero? No. Is the set, uh, digit a one? Uh -huh. First digit a two, mm -hmm. three, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. five, mm -hmm. six, uh -huh. seven, uh -huh. eight, uh -huh. nine. Uh -huh. Okay, and I'm gonna go from the top. Zero, uh -huh. one, uh -huh. two, uh -huh. three. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a zero. <laughs> and uh, if you do me a favor and type in the last number. Holy shit. <laughs> you missed the camera. Like, I unlocked your phone. My girl's a fucking magician. This is an issue. <laughs> wow. And again, just a, a one more clarification. We had no prior contact, right? Wow. Huh? <laughs> I'm about to talk to App about their security. <laughs> You know, that whole thing that was happening back in 2016, <coughs> all they needed to do was just recruit me, and I'd be like, yeah, here's the passcode. Wow, apparently. <laughs> That's insane, man. Thank you for coming on the podcast. No problem. Wow, please plug away mm -hmm. your uh, Instagram and all that stuff. Wow. All right, well. I'm blown away right now. Wow. <laughs> I did my job. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, again, yeah, guys, thanks so much for having me. Um, my... Uh, my Instagram, pretty much all of my social media, even my backslash on my Facebook, and even my Twitch. Yeah, that's right. You can watch uh, watch me playing video games. Hey, I'm on, not on stage, you know. Uh, <laughs> performing, uh, like I'm born to perform, you know. Even when I'm not performing, I'm still.
performing somewhere. <laughs> um, I don't know if playing video games counts as a performance though, but all of them, including the backslashes on like Twitch and Facebook, are Alex Morgan Live, A L E X M O R G A N L I V E. And also, if you guys want to check out my website, it is www.mindofmorgan.com, M I N D O F M O R G A N.com. And on that website, when you first go there, you will see that picture of me wearing that three-piece, that blue three-piece suit I was telling you guys about before. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I promise I'm not going to be wearing that thing for much longer on stage. You have my word. Oh, um, man. This has been amazing. Yeah. Man. Yeah, this is amazing. Also, bookings. Alex Morgan live at gmail.com. A-L-E-X-M-O. You guys know what you heard me before. Anyways, yeah. go ahead. Let's go no, ahead. that's right. Um, get a plug away. Make sure you get your business. Thank you, right? Yeah, man. Thank you for coming out here. Man. Nice nice thank you. Me. On a Wednesday night. Yeah, thank you, man. No problem. Um, Any excuse to get out of Jersey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. <laughs> but yeah, as always, guys, make sure you guys rate, share, subscribe, check out the YouTube page. Mm -hmm. If you want to see Especially these, you want to see these ones. Yeah. The boy unlocked my passcode. Okay. <laughs> he went through my phone. Nah, I'm joking, but insane card trick. He guessed my birthday. He guessed my passcode on my phone. I wouldn't lie to you guys, okay? Go to the YouTube page, check that out. Make sure you um, go to iTunes and rate us. Make sure you check us out on Spotify. Uh, what else are we on? Stitcher. Stitcher Google, Play. Google Play. Yeah, I don't forget those ones. SoundCloud. Spotify. Spotify. Everywhere. Yeah. Wherever you are, go listen. Make sure you share the podcast with everyone. Check out Alex Morgan's yes. IG and all of his stuff because this boy's talented. All right, guys. Until next time, it's cool now. Stay cool. Bye. God, man. You got me like filling the table. <laughs> wow. Like, and that's like, I, I.